daytime with Aston Avery. Now, uh, this show today is all about uh, women in business and The Apprentice being back on our TV screens this past week. And we'll be joined by three powerful business women. But uh, one of them is a past winner of The Apprentice and they won it back in 2018. Can you guess who it is? But I'll give you, uh, put you out your misery later on. But right now, Joining me is a man that has no dare fire. It is Gateway's regular contributor. That is Stephen Smith. He joins me right now. So, Stephen, hello. <laughs> Trust me, one or two people have tried to fire me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not one of them. I, I, I'm, a little, I'm a little political sometimes. Yeah. How are you, Aston? Happy New Year. And you're looking well. Happy New Year to you, Stephen. And I'm not, uh, I'm not firing you right now. So that's the good news, anyway. <laughs> but, uh, but the thing is, it's the first show of the year. But uh, eleven days into the New Year, Stephen, how's it going so far? Going really well. I've been doing, uh, I've been doing a, 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 a quite a few other radio shows, and a couple of new articles, etc. There, so I've been busy. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm really excited to be on today. And uh, this is a really passionate subject for me, women in business. I've been a big supporter of, of, of conferences for it uh, and workshops. Uh, women in business is something that's really important to me uh, and is to the world. Oh, indeed. And with that being said as well, it, it, as I mentioned about first show of the year, but uh, Stephen, you've been actively involved in putting events on like yeah, women uh, this. Uh, so do you think it? they are necessary now, especially in a diverse world? Absolutely, even more necessary. I think, uh, funny enough, one of our guests is coming on, Marianne Nansen, and I put on a huge event for KPMG, uh, one of the big companies. And what's really interesting is people think when it says women in business, that it's about knocking men. And it's so not about knocking men. In fact, many men come to women in business. Uh, um, the reason they come is we want them to know what it's like for women. They can open up and talk what it's like for a woman working in an environment. And sometimes men don't know how to approach women in business. You know, if a woman's too glamorous, they're a little bit uncomfortable. Uh, I, I know some women have used that for their advantage, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> and, but it really is important that um, you know, that men know how women feel and other women talk to each other. So we put on these things that's called women in business uh, or whatever, there's all sorts of different names for it. And it's workshops within companies talking about how women feel uh, working together and for men to ask questions, um, et cetera. And they're really helpful, Aston. Oh, indeed. And also as well, Stephen, have you always had positive experience working with uh, women in business here? And positive experiences, you know, the problem is when people say uh, they're managers, it's a real skill. You just don't buy a shop, employ 10 people and go, I'm a manager. Uh, and I've had bad experiences with people that are not managers. Now, there's a reason you go to university and do a degree in business. Or if you are discussing, at least you go and learn how to work with people. Uh, I've seen people... Uh, have what I call vanity projects. They go and they buy a business and they call themselves a the manager uh, and they play people off against each other. They make friends with people and that can be very dangerous. Uh, I've seen people have, have uh, uh, you know, almost breakdowns working for people like that. But people that are highly skilled uh, and, the business, and also have trained how to look after people. I've had amazing experiences with, with women, uh, uh, you know, because uh, you know they, they, they've been good at what they do. Um, now, as say, it, it is a skill managing. It's not something you just pick up. Now that being said, uh, Stephen, obviously the first Apprentice show, the new series, started last week. So, what do you think of the new Apprentice uh, show that started last week? I've got to say, you know, and, and I've got a lovely show, show coming on in a minute. I'm a little bored of the format. I think they could have brought something a bit more exciting in. I thought I've looked and thought, oh, say the same thing again. I would like to have seen some older people that perhaps didn't get the chance or the funds to be involved in it this year, or, who are, or, or some successful people involved. Just bring it up a little bit. It just looked at the same format. And as for that cruise, uh, I mean, I thought I'd have fired a lot of them. I mean, my goodness, did they know nothing about cruises? Well, they could have done the gay cruise, which are huge. They could have done this, uh, the 80s music cruise, which is huge. Instead, they did the most boring, generic uh, two, cru two cruises uh, I've ever seen. So they all should have gone, as far as I'm concerned. But I, I think it's time to do something with it and make it a bit more exciting. 
Indeed. And uh, that being said, Stephen, I wasn't impressed by the name choices for both <laughs> uh, Cruise Divers here. So, but, uh, after watching the first episode, but I will be watching the second episode later this week. But I'm uh, really excited about it. I, I mean, look, I'll keep going with it, but just it's time to get it. You know, uh, you know, it just you know, it was predictable already. The glamorous blonde that's a bit of a bitch, and uh, and the, the one taking her on. It just been nice to have brought something new into it. I think. Now, speaking of The Apprentice, and uh, she joined us um, three months ago, I'd have to say now. She's a yeah, previous winner that. of The Apprentice, and it's 2018's winner of The Apprentice, and her own brand of clothing can be found in Asda stores. And that joining us right now, 2018 Apprentice winner, Sean Gabidon. So hello, Sean. Hello, how are you doing? Oh, what do you always look so gorgeous? You look like oh, you've got a hair and makeup. You. I made effort today. Oh, you look lovely. <laughs> you look really nice. Thank you. So uh, thanks for coming on again, Sean. So uh, how are you? But has the start of 2022 been going well for you, especially with your company, Sean Marie? Yeah, so far so good. I'm, I'm very well, thank you. Um, new year, new opportunities, fresh start again for everyone and hopefully coming out the back end of COVID now. So yeah, I feel good. Are you wearing something from the range today? No, I'm not. I'm not because <laughs> I, honestly, I live in my range. And when I do certain things, I'm like, I can't just wear a tracksuit because it's, it's tracksuit and casual. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So yeah. this isn't, but yeah. <laughs> Listen, what did you think of this year's uh, Light Up for the Apprentice? Have you been watching it? I have been watching it. Uh, the first episode was hilarious as as usual. Um, and it's... it's it's early days in it. We don't know any of them yet. We don't really know much about them. But I think you do start to see a few um, kind of positives. You see a few people who you think are probably going to do quite well and get quite far. And then a few people who you're like, I'm not sure how they got on. <laughs> <laughs> but now I'm enjoying it. Do you not want to jazz it up a little bit? A little bit of the same format uh, 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 as usual? I know. It's hard, isn't it, though, because it's such a well-known show and it's so kind of... It's always been the same. It's tricky because then if you change it, you'll probably lose fans who like it for what it is. But yeah, I do cool. think this year the tasks will probably be a bit of a different level. I felt like last year was the same. It was a bit more like a bit cooler, a bit yeah. more uh, technology focused, like new vibes, I think. So hopefully this year there'll be a bit more of that. But I hear what you're saying on the on the format. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, that being said, uh, Sean, as well, we're talking about women in business today. So is there yeah. any advice you'd like to give out to young females who are listening, who are looking okay. and wanting to be like you, yeah. and how to get started in your own business here? Definitely. Well, it's a, it's one of those where, it's, it, you know what, I'm just glad that I can give advice and I can be a, that woman that people can look at and say, I want to be like, a, especially the younger generation. But I think with business, it's one of those where business or just a goal that you have, it's about putting the time in, putting the effort in, sacrificing is massive. I think with social media now, you think business is all fun and games and being a CEO. And like you were talking about being a manager, you know, there is a vanity in that, but it's hard work. So what mm -hmm. I would say to anyone who's interested in it is you can 100% do it. You can achieve what you want to achieve, but it's not easy. And you do have to be determined, dedicated and, and sacrifice. Did you do any training as a manager going into your own business and how to deal with people? Not really, no. I, I had a full-time job before I set up my brand and I was only young then, I was in my teens, but I have always had quite good communication skills and I think just as a person in general and, and being a northerner, I'm, I'm generally quite nice and friendly. I get along with people, but it's hard because as a manager, as a CEO, you, you can't be that person all the time. So <laughs> you have to learn how to manage people and the different types of people that you, you're working with. So it's, it's tricky. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, a lot of the women in business, I mean, I've run conferences uh, on women in business. A lot of women uh, I've talked to come across bullying in the workplace. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really quite common. Uh, have you, did you ever come across any bullying yourself? I've, I, w I don't know if I class it as bullying, but I worked for a big corporate company before, for, for quite a while before I set up my business. And that was very much, you know, 
traditional types of business where you've got the the men dominating yeah. the women and, and at the time I was younger and I've always been quite outspoken you know I've always said what I've thought in meetings even even when I was young and there was definitely instances where you know you'd be in a big board meeting full of men and there'd be the odd girl in there and I, I, it was sometimes you'd know your place as such you'd feel like you were you know they didn't really appreciate what you were saying even though you were right and you knew what you were talking about there definitely was that element and I think for me how I've always attacked that has been as long as I know my stuff and I'm you know I, I believe what I'm saying they can't like there's no negative in that like they can't give yeah. you bad feedback if I'm actually right with what I'm saying. No, it's, it's quite interesting. I mean, I, I've had women tell me they've been taken to one side uh, and told how to dress for work, not really? to show much cleavage uh, um, for a man. Well, you can imagine tell, taking a man to one side and telling him how to dress appropriately for a woman. Uh, you know, it, it, that, that's quite common in the workplace, uh, uh, women being told how to dress appropriately. Uh, as I, I was saying earlier, I do know one woman that uses her sexuality when, when dealing with men sometimes, who's <laughs> got a very successful business. It's really, do you know what, it's, it's so interesting because in my position now, you know, with my staff and with anybody I employ, the main yeah. focus for me is about them being good at their job. Yeah. and. You know, we're not a customer facing business, but as long as you come to work and you do what I need you to do for me and for the business and you're driven and you, you know, you're everything that you see fee says it is, I'm not too fussed about other things. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's, a, it's a tricky one though, isn't it? It's, all, it's a tricky one because then as as anyone not just a woman but you should know how to dress as well yeah. in certain situations you know yeah. so appropriately as, as in a, a sort of for classy uh and for turning up to represent the company i suppose exactly uh, whatever the company rules are you have to abide by so it's, you know yeah. it's, it's hard to, you need to yeah, find yeah. a balance that's a hard one isn't it <laughs> so winning the apprentice there sean which you done back in 2018 there did the show add to your business portfolio and uh was the man himself, Lord Sugar, much help to you as well on your? Oh success? gosh, yes, of course he was. It was one hundred percent. Yeah, as a, as a business, you know, pre the Apprentice, small business. Uh, I guess small goals in some way. I always wanted to make it big, but getting the investment, working with somebody like Lord Sugar, just pushes that forward so much quicker. And obviously, he knows so much about so much. He's been in this game a long time, a lot longer than I have. And having him on board, having his knowledge, his contacts, you know, it's it's major, yeah. And what I was really interested in, you see that now Lodge is your partner. Does that mean on Monday morning he turns up to work with you? No, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> he's not in, he literally is not in my office or, no, but he is on hand. We do speak a lot. We have yeah. catch-ups, you know, usually once a month minimum um to run through what's going on and yeah he is he is involved because even for me I wasn't sure how it would work you know he's busy he has a lot of other apprentice winners and his own things that he works on and filming for shows so of course yeah but you know he is a uh, fair player yeah he's very involved oh that's great so he was a great help to you you would say yes 100%. Now, another question, and all your press and this is just would be an interesting subject um it says the first black winner of yeah. the apprentice would you like to see a day where that was even mentioned it's a funny one with with something like that because i do feel like it's necessary right now because we yeah. still have a lot of work to do and one thing i am very actually i'm quite happy that i can be that person yeah. and for black mixed race younger girls i can be that person that they look up to and say i look like her i want to be like her when i'm older yeah. but i think then as minorities in general there is that element of for us to be equal eventually we yeah. need to not yeah be singled out for our you know for whatever makes us different but it's hard because you need to you need awareness it's I only came across because when i was reading your, your bios and everything and we'd met before etc and i suddenly felt uh, I didn't, I mean, oh yes uh but really is that is that necessary anymore uh you know it's hard uh, and, and it, do you know what i actually i think that it is necessary right now because i think that we like I said I think it's just about being able to be that beacon for yeah, of course, yeah. you know for the younger people but um 
But I do think as we move forward, just as minorities in general, yeah. we, we need to be equality is what it, you know, it's what we strive for. So yeah, it's hard to not put yourself yeah. in the box then Even as well. The, word, word, the first gay or the first this, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. You never get a white <laughs> yeah. winner yeah. Or, or, you know, it, it'd just be nice to see, to be, to be quite honest. I think it's just, it's, it's being a minority and having a voice and being able to, you know, speak up. Yeah, you know when it's different, I guess, as white people because they're not the minority, so yeah, you wouldn't say the white yeah. winner. But yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think eventually the ideal is that we are all equal and the you, everybody's yeah. on the same playing field. Yeah. But yeah. until then, I think yeah, it, it get, does yeah. need, and also yeah. you get a chance to be a voice. Uh, yeah, uh, and there's still a lot of work to be done, unfortunately. So uh, that being said, here, uh, Sean, as well, do you inspire other women in business at the same time? I hope so. I, I like to think that I do. I think being fairly young, I say young, I'm 30 this year, oh my God. Um, but, you know, as a younger woman in business, being on, on a TV show, so having that kind of wide reach, you know, having the following, being mixed race, being from the North. Like, I like to think I, I, I'm a, a bit of an inspiration to quite a few different types of people. Yeah. Um, and that's one thing that I guess... I never really thought of until winning The Apprentice and being in my position now. Yeah. I'm, I'm just glad that I can be that person because especially being on a TV show, because I think being on The Apprentice, although it's funny and there's humour, it's a serious show and you, yeah, you, win, you, know, you, you win a lot of money at the end. You, you work with Lord Sugar. Yeah. Um, so for me, I, I'm just glad that younger girls can look up to me and I have that credibility of a show that's, you know, it's that. It's not just... Uh going on TV and, I don't know, kissing I mean, boys. Kind of break the mold a little bit and people see, I mean, uh, out of point women were like Alexis Colby from Dynasty, if they're a business woman, hard as nails. Uh, yeah. and, and then there's, he, there's you, you know, soft, uh, feminine and fun. Yeah. And, and it shows, it's, 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 it's people like they think, oh, I could do this. Uh, that's what, and that's what I think it's about nowadays is that it's kind of changing, changing stereotypes. Yeah. I think just as business people in general, you think about people in suits with briefcases and, and it's not like that. Like, you know, not nowadays with social media, you can set up any type of business from yeah. home on a laptop. You know, it's different. The way I know we, we all find it really funny The Devil Wears Prada. You know the the, the yeah. evil bitch boss that comes in, but it's a woman every time. You know, <laughs> every yeah. time, and it's not really funny to be quite truthful. <laughs> well, that's why that's the thing. It's actually interesting. You said the stereotype of a female in business is that kind of bitch. You know, everybody in the office is scared of her when she walks through, and and it's kind of you know I understand that, but it's not it's not always like that, and no. that's not how twenty first century business always works. So no, no, it's refreshing no. to be able to be someone who, I guess, shows that in a way. You know, the other thing it's often with business powerful business when they complain, I you know that the the. Uh, they, they, they can't find love or, or they find a boyfriend because they're successful or more successful than the boyfriend. Yeah. Uh, have, uh, not to go into your love life, but have, have you found love? Or, or... I, ha I have. I oh. have. Oh, gosh, yeah. I've been with my boyfriend for like over 10 years now. Um, we met when we was younger. He was very successful and he's a businessman himself. So he actually was probably more of an inspiration for me to oh. do what I'm doing. Yeah. When I met him, he was uh, running businesses and literally he would, we'd wake up and he'd just be sat on his phone doing what he needs to do. And I think I want to be able to do this. Like, and that's what I guess drove me to do what I do now. So I have been a lucky one, but it is hard because I guess there's that intimidation factor as well. Yeah. It's whether men would feel a certain way about someone maybe earning more money than them or whatever. I don't know. I know sometimes some of my, my, my friends that are quite powerful that ladies I, 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 so, I said, so I corrected them and told him I went did you have to do that on the first date <laughs> there probably wasn't a second day I've not had any experience in in that because you know I've always I've always been with somebody but well, yeah, I guess nice. it would be hard yeah it'd be tricky how long have you been with them all together how, how many years so it's been I think this is our 11 11th year together Oh my yeah. God! Are you yeah. married? We're not. We're not married. We've got no kids. We're both very career driven. We will yeah. eventually, and but, you know uh, that's well, that's where I'm moving towards more now. But we've we, that's why it's worked as well. Because I think well, that's really nice. Yeah, that's a real positive story. Yeah. 
Exactly. You can find love in business. <laughs> <laughs> some some say there are some misconceptions, especially in the workforce here, uh, Sean. So what are the bis- biggest misconceptions that are about you here? About me personally, um, it's a funny one because I think if I talk about like pre, pre The Apprentice and pre winning the show, in just in general, I think as a, as a woman, sometimes you are taken on face value and there's that kind of bimbo thing, you know, where people think that you don't, you, you've got no brains, you just got a pretty face or whatever. And I definitely feel like when I was younger, there was an element of that, but I've always been quite intelligent in general anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think then when people get to know me, and you know, one thing that, that happens a lot with women, and I'm sure there'll be a lot that can agree, Sometimes people get to know you and they go, oh, you're a lot nicer than I thought you'd be. And you're like, that's <laughs> like is that a compliment? Or, you know, what does that even mean? And I, you have that. I, I don't get it as much now because I think people know me, you know, from the show. But I used to get that a lot. And I used to think I don't understand what, what <laughs> it is about me that you think is not going to be nice, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's been, it's been fantastic. How, how did people find you? Uh, so they can find the brand at shamarie.com, uh, the loungewear. We are also on George. We're in Asda, in stores uh-huh. online. And uh, my personal Instagram is Shan Gabidon, so at Shan Gabidon. How did you come up with that, Shamarie? It's, it's, it's my name. Oh, so you know, it's, it's, oh it's, okay. <laughs> 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 well, my name, my middle name is Marie. And okay. I had a few different name ideas, but I thought I'll just stick to my name. It's it's me. It's my design. So yeah. Oh well, well done. What what, what else have you got coming up for the rest of the year? Um, we've got lots. So we've got uh, we're about to shoot our new summer range, which we're launching around the end of February, March time. That's going to be also in in Asda and George stores. Um, yeah new retailers we're in discussions with, new opportunities cropping up left, right and centre, some secret, some you might see, you might hear about, but just lots, just lots. I love a new year because it just feels like we've had a bit of time off. A reality show about you businesses. Say that again. We're going to have a reality show. Oh, would you like one? Yeah, it'd be really good fun. I did it last time. (laughs) <laughs> I would love it. I would love a reality show about me and my business. And I think it would actually be quite refreshing to see something that's got that kind of positive vibe to it. Yeah, but, but um, I'm you go, go in and, and create create your business. And, and I, I love to, I love shows like that. Uh, well, yeah. I'll have to speak to Netflix, see what they're saying. <laughs> <laughs> You know what, Sean, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on today here on Gateway and I uh, hope you come back and uh, join us for another programme. Definitely will. Thank you well, guys thank very you, much. Thank you so much for coming on. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Sean Gabidon here on oh, Gateway 97.8. Sorry, Stephen. She was Jeez. lovely, wasn't she? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, Stephen, gonna uh, gonna uh, come back to you shortly after travel, and we'll be speaking Thank to you, Marianne Nansen. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs>